All right, welcome back to another art demonstration. Here today, we're gonna to be working on something called the isms that we've been talking about in the lesson. So we're gonna do four different landscapes. Um, the first one is surrealism, and then there's gonna be surrealism, post-impressionism, impressionism, and cubism. Can you guess which one's which? If you guess that the first one is surrealism, then you'd be right, because this is not something you'd see in nature. And the second one is post-impressionism, because it has big, bright strokes. These colors are not exactly how you'd see them in nature. Impressionism is this one, because you barely kind of hint at what's really going on. And this is cubism, because it's just geometric shapes. So we're gonna make four landscapes today on one piece of paper. And I'm going to show you how we're, what we're going to need today. So the first thing you need is white paper. And then you can use a straight edge um, or pencil. You don't need a straight edge, but it really, it's really nice. It helps. And then any kind of pencil, colored pencil or um, regular pencil. Markers are nice. Again, you don't have to use exactly the same materials as I use that you can, and crayons, and um, you can use paint or watercolor paint. I, I got this paint for a dollar each little baggie, and it la it'll last forever. It's temper paint, and I got that a dollar at Target. And this paint palette is also a dollar. Um, there's a pack of these little brushes, you can find um, a lot of times you can find these at Walmart or a craft store. Um, you don't have to use all that. So you can use just the paintbrush that comes with your with your watercolor set, um, or you could buy an art set that has multiple things. You can use just you know your basic paintbrush that comes with your art set. That's fine uh, with the watercolors. You don't have to use all these materials. You can use basically anything, markers, crayons, colored pencils, paint. But I'm just gonna show you what I do and you can do exactly what I do or you could do your own thing, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna divide it in half this way, I'm gonna have vertically, and then I'm gonna divide it in half horizontally. I'm just gonna eyeball it using my straight edge um, as my guide, oops, I didn't mean to go through. Um, my straight edge is my guide to create that straight line when I glide my pencil along it. But eyeballing it means like I'm not going to measure it. You can measure it and make it perfectly straight, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to show you like this. So the next thing I do, actually, I like to do is I like to go over it again over my pencil mark once I've got them in the right place, in case I make a mistake, I like to go over with marker, black marker, because I like a bold line. That's an optional step. Okay, so it just kind of depends on you what you want to do. Okay, so in my example here, we're going to start with surrealism. I just like chose this because I love ice cream and there's a clock. So I chose things that have similar shapes to things in nature. So um, it doesn't have to be this, but I like ice cream and these look like kind of like mountain shapes. So I made these different mountains and then a circle, a clock can be a sun. So um, because it's a, the shape. So what I did is I just made my circle and I made my mountain shapes and they can be literally any kind of curvy shape, it doesn't really matter. And I put my horizon line in and then a wiggly line here for my chocolate river. This is a mistake here. But, so then I just sort of filled everything in. I colored it in simply and then I made my cherries on top of each of the mountains. And then I just colored it in with markers and crayons. So you can do whatever you want, but basically you just do your outline and then color it in. So there's no mystery to that one. But just the main thing about this one is using your imagination and finding different things that 
that could work in a surrealist landscape, some things that don't really belong in nature, but maybe are interesting to you. The next one is going to be post-impressionist. So for this one, we want to use thick brush strokes and a lot of really bright colors. So this one, I just got my regular brush, paint brush, and I use these little temper paints that I got for a dollar. And again, you can use watercolor, but I just got these, they're really easy to use. So I like to start in my background for where I used to do, go back to front. That's usually the best way to do a painting is not to start with the things that are the details in the very, very front, but always start with the things that are furthest away from you. And the sky is definitely the furthest thing away. So I'm gonna do like big brush strokes from my sky. Okay, and I know it's gonna, and I have to make a horizon line. So I'm gonna actually do that right now. Okay, my horizon line, and I'm going to go back to making thick brush strokes for my sky. And then I'm even gonna do like kind of swirlies, swirly shapes. And then once I feel like I have enough blue, I'm going to switch colors. What other colors do I have in my sky? Well, I have purple. And I can follow the same kind of patterns. So I'm going to put a bunch of, of purple in here. Again, it's going to be big, big, big brush strokes. I'm not blending at all. That's why I like this tempera paint. You can use acrylic paint. And you can use watercolor too, but I like this because it makes it very bright. I can even use pink. I'm not even cleaning my brush between them so it can kind of mix a little bit. So my paint, my sky is kind of swirly whirly. Now I'm gonna go in with some white. And actually now I'm gonna clean my brush with a little bit of water and dry it. And then I'm going to go in here and make some white with the club to make little lighter sections. And that's my sky. And that's good enough for me. Now, if I wanted it to be more pink on one side or anything, that's completely up to you. Um, you can even put yellow in there if you want this to have little, you know, sunshiny or you want to put more clouds. Or, I mean, I didn't really put any clouds, but you know what I mean. Okay, I clean my brush. I'm going to do my, my land. So I'm going to do a little bit of brown here. I'm going to kind of make it like an ombre gradient a little bit. I have some greens. Put more green over here. Some yellows. I'm gonna mix them in a little bit, maybe even some orange and some red even, because we have a little bit of that too. So a little bit of everything. Now I'm gonna use purple for my shadows. Okay, so you can put a tree. Um, I So I've got my whole basic landscape. Now I'm just, my only subject in here is really a tree. So I'm going to go in with, in my example, I use three colors. I use red um, for the middle ground. So I'm going to go ahead and do red here. And then I use black on one side for my shadow. And on the other side, my highlight, I use orange. Oh, I need to clean my brush because black is too strong of a color for me to for the other color. So use orange. Then I brought some of that orange up here and just made like some stampy stamps and some yellow, green all over, a little bit of blue, just stamping, and then a little bit of yellow for some highlight in the front, and that's it. Okay, and I can even like connect my, like extend these colors down here to make like a shadow. All right, so that's post-impressionism. Does it have to look exactly like that? No, there's just one way to do it. One of my favorites is, these are all some of my favorites, but 
one of my most favorites is um, Impressionism. And this one works really well if you're, you have watercolors. These temper paints work super awesome too because they're very watery and you can mix them really well with water. So let's go back to our examples real quick. So we did this one. This is our example of the post impression that looks pretty much like what we just did. Now what we're gonna do is this one and that you can see how it would look really nice with watercolor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my a dark line right in the middle of blue. And it's going to be thick here and then I'm gonna fade it up When I mean I'm fading up, I'm kind of spreading this, oops, sorry, camera got in the way. I'm gonna lift this up. I'm gonna kind of spread this side to side to where it's smeared out, and I'm gonna smear it down both above and below my thick line. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a little bit of water, and I'm gonna see how I'm kind of fading it downwards, but I'm not going all the way down. So it's gonna get lighter when I add water to it. Same thing with up this way. It's gonna be lighter and lighter and lighter. And you can see it's darker in the middle. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of purple on my horizon line. The horizon's where the sky meets the, the sea or the land so that you can have that little bit of darker area. Um, you can see where the where it stops and starts. And that um, shows space, okay, um, in your work. Then I'm gonna do a little bit of purpley stuff because there seems like maybe there's some trees back here and then there's a bit of a reflection for them right here. So I just did a bit of purple and I'm gonna fade it out with some plain water. So it's like, there's a hint there that there's, your eye will be tricked to know that there's something there, but I don't know what it is. And then water goes horizontally. So you always have your, your lines will go horizontally and it, very, every few um, of them will go down for a little bit of reflection. Just a couple for like, just a couple little ones for emphasis. And the same thing with, with clouds, I mean the sky that goes horizontally usually. Now I'm gonna take a little orange and I'm gonna head up right here, make a little circle this is my, you guessed it, it's the sun. Now I'm gonna make a little straight line here. That's gonna be my reflection, but I'm gonna get some plain water and I'm just gonna break it apart a little bit like the water is running there. All right, so I'm almost done with that one and then we have one more to go. So now I'm just gonna get some plain black and I'm gonna do some little boats. So I'm gonna do do. Do, do three boats, three little black horizontal lines. And then I'm gonna do tiny little vertical lines. And those are literally it. That is my boat. You could even do a little thing like that if you really wanted to. You don't need to. You could probably barely see the one in the back or maybe there isn't one. But yeah, that's liter literally it. That is my seat. You can tell even though it's not detailed, you can tell what that it's some sort of sky with sun and there's some boats and this is water and there's like trees or something here. And that's enough information for you to get the idea. That's impressionist. And then now cubist. I just basically have some geometric shapes and it doesn't really matter what you do. Um, so cubism, you can just, um, I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually draw them. So I'm gonna draw a cone. It's basically a triangle with a curved base and then maybe a circle and then maybe um, a cylinder. Maybe these things represent, maybe this is a tree and this is like a bush and this is something else like in the background. Okay, so that is our, and then that is our basic idea. And then maybe this triangle has, like I can see it from the front view or the back view and the side view, and maybe this one 
I can see it from the side view and maybe this one here is a cylinder that I can see this way because usually it's like shapes that you can see from mo multiple angles. Um, so it's just kind of a, a representation of things. It doesn't have to be very specific. So again, we're going to just take some color. I'm going to do pink today. Um, I'm going to pretend like my light is coming from this side. So I'm going to make this darker. So I make it darker along the bottom, kind of curve my lines because to give the illusion of three dimensionality. And this one is going to be kind of a flat shape. So I'm going to get a little bit of white and mix that. And I'm actually going to get another color purple from my really dark shadow. Now it has more of a three dimensional shape. Now this one I'm going to do green and it's going to be a little bit darker on the left again. So I'll get some blue. This green is very, very runny. Maybe some yellow and some white. For my highlight. Maybe this is some sort of tree, so I'm going to do brown here. Let's get a little bit of water. It's got a little dark here, but that's okay. Okay. And that's it. All right. You guys have a great rest of your day. And we'll be back soon with more demos.